Game seven against the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference semifinals, and I'm looking at you, and you walked off that court immediately. And to my knowledge, I had never seen you that upset. I want, I want you to take me back to that moment. How were you feeling at that particular moment when you guys had lost in the playoffs to the Boston Celtics? Um, you know, you never want your season to end early, you know, and, you know, for one, the first thought to my mind was, you know, wow, okay, so now what I'm going to do, you know, yeah. is, you know, I knew we had the Olympics, but I'm like, you know, I didn't want the season to end this way, you know, being that close to, to beating them and being able to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals, it was like, you know, one or two more plays um, could have could have prevailed us to get to that next step. And, mm -hmm. Um, we didn't make the plays. But was it a matter of the plays, or was it a matter of you looking at this Cleveland Cavaliers team at that time and saying, we're not good enough? Well, I, I thought we were, um, I thought we could be, become really better. Mm -hmm. We could become better. And um, I think the team that we had out there, you know, with the late season trade, you know, happened in February, it didn't allow us to really get um, comfortable with each other. You know, adding Delonte and, and Joe Smith and Ben Wallace and Wally Zerbiak, we didn't get enough chemistry in time. Mm -hmm. To, to face Boston, even though we played them well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one thing that's helped us now that we've come into this season with all our pieces right from the beginning. So looking at it from that standpoint, right now, looking at your squad, your roster, your supporting cast, what are your expectations for the Cleveland Cavaliers this year? Um, well, my expectations is, is always going to be high. Um, just because how I feel as an individual, I feel like I continue to get better every year. I continue to bust my butt in the off season to get ready for a season to go into June. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I look forward to us competing for NBA championship this year. Mm -hmm. um, and every night I go on the court, I approach it that way, mm -hmm. on us trying to, to get better for the long-term mm -hmm. goal. Um, Short-term goal, we want to just continue to get better every night. Well, I'm not going to let you get off that easy. I mean, you were in the, you were in the <laughs> NBA Finals a couple of years ago. You're in the Eastern Conference. You're already competing for right, an NBA right. World Championship. We want to win so it. We want to win it. I want to win it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get our guys prepared to go out there and win it. Do you feel this team is good enough to do it? Um, right now, I don't think so. Not mm -hmm. right now. Um, but I think we have the right pieces. Mm -hmm. I think we have the right mentality every night we go out um, that we can do it. And I think um, it could be done. When you and I spoke earlier this season, you said this was the, probably the best team you've played on since you've been there. You still feel that way? Yeah, I still feel that way. Um, you know, I think the team they have aligned us with this season um, the pieces that we have at every position, mm -hmm. um, the depth that we had. I think in this league, you got to have depth. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the best teams, they come off the bench with guys that could be starters on opposing teams, mm -hmm. um, and, and we have that. Now, you know what the news is this week. I mean, the New York <laughs> Knicks. I mean, you know, I was going to ask you about this. The New York Knicks make a trade, and obviously it's perceived as being the LeBron James sweepstakes because right. everybody know that you're going to be available after 2010. What are the kind of thoughts that are going through your mind right now when you hear everybody bring up the New York Knicks, New York City, LeBron James? What do you say to that? Uh, it's, it's kind of, it gets funny. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my friends and my friends and family even starting to ask me what I'm going to do in two years. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I got to hear from my friends and family now what I'm doing. Uh, everybody know my, everybody know what road I'm headed to before I do. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just. I just try to maintain focus, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I know I'm going to hear it. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm a sports head, so I'm watching mm -hmm. everything that goes on around sports. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know the transactions that are happening, um, what's going on, and teams setting up um, for that summer, mm -hmm. you know, for that July 1st moment. I mean, because it's, it's, it's going to be probably the biggest free agency in NBA history with mm -hmm. myself and Dwayne and, and Omari mm -hmm. and Chris Bosh. That's mm -hmm. just to name a few. So, mm -hmm. um, I think when that time comes, I'm going to make my decision. All right, but I, that's implying that you haven't made a decision, which I understand. But what do you say to people out there to automatically assume right. that you want to leave Cleveland? Because you got people in Cleveland that say, please don't leave us, right. and, and rightfully so. Well, I, I've, I've, always, I've always gone out and, and stated the fact that I love being in Cleveland. My friends are family there. I grew up there. And every night I go out on the basketball court, I showcase that to those fans. Um, I've never had any reason to leave mm -hmm. um, and you know I've been happy you know my six-year career since I've been there now but you were just upset the other day with the taco incident yeah, I mean, that, I, yeah, that, I mean what, 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 yeah, what ticked you off about that I mean there's some broke, <laughs> this, this economy there's some broke people out there that taco meant a lot to them LeBron. no it did I mean but you know you got the, <laughs> it did. Yeah, I, I guess when you put it that way <laughs> you put it that way man but you know we up you know we up 12 points and 
I would miss more free throws. So <laughs> right. They went crazy after that. Yes, they did go crazy. They went crazy. Did, did anybody approach you in the street about that? Anybody want to beat you down? Any, anything no, like I've that? Been, I've been, uh, I've been making sure I've been watching my back after that incident. <laughs> exactly. With that being said, and just looking at it from this standpoint, it seems like there's an immense amount of pressure on the Cleveland Cavaliers organization simply because obviously yourself, D. Wade, all of these guys, you're in position to be free agents. Mm -hmm. Is it a situation, even if assuming you stay in Cleveland, you wanted the organization on their toes to make sure they recognize it, you want to be in a position to compete and you don't want oh, something I, taken I, for granted? Well, I think our organization knows that. I think Danny knows that. I think our, our, our owner knows that, Dan Gilbert, Mike Brown. I mean, they all know that. Um, I want to be put in a position where I could compete for an NBA championship, and you have to have the right person out on the court to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, me as an individual can can help us through games and help us compete for those games, but you have to have personnel, and I mean, that's that's common sense. So um, I think they're going to try to, I mean, I know they will, you know, try to put us in a position to try to do that. Mm -hmm. Is that fit? Is in light of what you just explained, is it fair to say that that's one of the reasons why you signed the contract that you signed? Because you wanted to put everybody on notice, do your job if you want me to stay here. Well, I think I signed a short-term deal was the, the absolute, just to try to keep my options um, available. At the end of the day, we all know this is a business. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you never know, you know, getting locked down in, in a six or seven year deal. You never know what may happen. So, um, you know, with me being able just to, I'm turning 25. Mm -hmm. and, me still being young and having a lot of years mm -hmm. of my NBA career, I wanted to have the option mm -hmm. um, to see if I wanted to do anything else. What do you want out of your career? What do you want out of life? LeBron James. What do I want out of life? I want my, my two sons, man, to, to live life like, like it's no tomorrow, man, mm -hmm. and to, to live without worry. I mean, you know, I know the days that, that I had when I was young, and I don't want my my kids to ever see those days. But with all due respect, you've already accomplished that goal. Yeah, absolutely, but yes. they have no idea what they're going through right now. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. You know, I got the four-year-old, he don't know what's going on. He knows, you know, you see his dad on TV come to the games. Mm -hmm. The one-year-old, he just, he just do what he want to do. But, you know, I want my friends and family to, to know that I'm a, you know, I was always been a genuine man. You know, and I want the, my kids to know that their father was, you know, was great. I asked that question because a lot of people look at LeBron James and they say it's not just about an NBA World Championship. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that wants to, ble to wants to be a global icon. I want you to elaborate on that and talk to the, talk to America about what your goals are, not just about the game of well, basketball, I, but beyond. Well, I think it was a point in time where they said the game of basketball had took a uh, a stop. You know, the the love of the game wasn't like it was when Mike retired or when Mike was in his prime and doing the things that he did. Um, but me being a global icon, I want to try to inspire kids not only in America but everywhere to love the game of basketball mm -hmm. and, and know that this is the greatest sport that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and every night I go on the court, wherever I am, if I'm in China in the Olympics, um, if I'm here in New York City, I'm back home in Cleveland, I want to be able to inspire mm -hmm people that's not even there, mm -hmm. you know, globally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's how I approach the game like that. But saying. you talked about that in the context right. of the game. What does that have to do with a good relationship with Warren Buffett, a mastermind, <laughs> a billionaire? And see, that, that doesn't seem to be about basketball. Well, basketball is going to take care of that. <laughs> basketball, at the end of the day, going to take care of, you know, the, the, the meetings that I have with Warren Buffett. I got you. How refreshing was it or what? how eye-opening was it for you to be a part of the Olympics, going over there to China, seeing the global icon that Kobe Bryant has become, obviously Yao Ming. Yeah. What was that like for you? Um, it was an unbelievable experience um, to be over there and to see how they love the game of basketball. I mean, you can... You could tell people how good it was. You could tell people how great it was. But until you really get over there and see how inspiring those kids and those fans are, they don't get an opportunity to see us all the time. Mm -hmm. And to be over there with the USA Dream Team and um, to see how big Kobe Bryant was and, and, and to see how big Yao is, um, it was an eye-opening experience for myself. Well, you're the next guy in line. Seems like it's about to be on your shoulders right now. You ready for that challenge? Oh, absolutely. I've been, um, I'm going to accept all challenges with open arms and... Uh, you know, trying to embrace them. How big are you right now? I heard you're about 25 pounds heavier than you was last year. <laughs> Is that true? No, not 25 pounds. I'm uh, probably about 20. About 20 pounds? Yeah, probably What, what have you been eating? What you doing gaining 20 pounds? Wheaties. Wheaties. That's what it is. That's, That's what, it, what is. it is. Are you going to be harder to stop this postseason? Are we going to have we seen the best of LeBron James thus far? No, I don't think so. Um, I think the best LeBron James goes with when I'm out 
um, just getting easy baskets, and I think Mo Williams create that for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Delonte West cre creates that for me by them, by me not having to handle the ball in a half court situation as much. Um, I've gotten so many easy buckets this year because of those guys' penetration and those guys setting me up. So, um, have we seen the best of LeBron James? Um, I think we will come uh, April. Uh, come April, May. May, June. June, June absolutely. It, it might mean you might have to get through Boston and Detroit in order to do that, even yeah, though you're already you, going through Detroit once. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right? You got to do that. That's right. That's right. That. So, that's what you're saying? That's where you're going? That's where we're going. LeBron James in the NBA Finals against the Los Angeles Lakers and Kobe Bryant. Any fantasies about that at all? Oh, it'd be a good one. I said, have there been any fantasies about it? Uh, have not been any fantasies to, to you know, be in the finals and be in, uh, be in the stable center and the Lakers? Against Kobe. LeBron versus Kobe. You know, I, I love going against the best. And um, he's definitely the best. I mean, to, to watch him every night do the things that he do on the court is unbelievable. So. Um, that challenge will be great. There are some who say that when, it all said, when it's all said and done, that LeBron James will go down as arguably the greatest player of all time, possibly even greater than Michael Jordan if he's able to capture that many championships. Your thoughts? Um, wow. Um, for people to even put me in the same breath as uh, Michael Jordan or um, Oscar Robinson, Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, those guys that has accomplished so much in their career. Um, wow. Thank you, my man. Yes, sir. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.